Pricing is a really tricky topic to cover because there's not really a formula or a method that you can use 100% of the time. I mean, most of the time in anything creative, there are rules and then you know that those rules can be broken. I talk all the time about stuff on my channel where I'm like, don't do this, never do this, but it's like, you can do it sometimes. You just have to know the reasons and the reasons to break the rules and what the rules are. But when it comes to pricing, it's actually quite difficult because it's different for everybody and it's always down to the individual, but hopefully I can give you some tips that will help you know how to price your projects so that you keep getting work, but you also get more work down the road because it's it's not that effective to price one thing one time and do that one job and then never get work again. You want to figure out a method that's consistent and provides quality and good service for your clients or your customers, but at the same time, make sure that you're successful and that you're able to grow and get more gear and do bigger and better projects. So the thing that the first thing that you need to know about pricing is that it's all about what feels right and what feels right to you because you're the one that's setting the price almost all the time. Obviously, there's times where clients have specific budgets in mind and they'll say, hey, can you do this for this amount of money? And you can just say yes or no. And that's a pretty easy situation. But most of the time when people have questions, it's like they want something and I don't know how much I should charge for it. Now, most of the time when you're in a situation like that, I typically find that it's people who are a little bit newer and they're not very comfortable asking for money for what they're doing. And most of the time in those situations, I would say charge a reasonable amount, but on the low end, you know, don't go online and look at the top tier, you know, high end uh, photographers or video production people. Oh, so-and-so made a hundred thousand dollars directing a commercial. Well, if you don't know what you're worth and you don't know how to price things yet, don't don't expect to charge $100,000 for your first project for your first day. You know, you can go look up and you can kind of look up day rates for different people depending on the area because that's a factor, you know, cost of living in the area you're at, the the demand for work in the area definitely factors into it. But for video production or kind of any kind of creative service for a day rate, you could be as low as like 100, you know, for a day, which is like really, really low. That's what you would do if you're just kind of, you want something to kind of pay for gas and food, but you really don't have a lot of experience under your belt. And then it kind of ramps up to maybe like $300 a day, anywhere to like 500. And that's kind of a good sweet spot for people who are just general freelance or independent contractors in my area. That could go a little bit higher to maybe 600, 700 in more expensive areas. And that could go all the way up to 1,000 or 1,500 if it's a really a specialty job. So you do something very specific that there's not a lot of other people who have that gear or that particular skill. And so you charge a premium because you know you can and you know it's in demand. Now, don't charge charge so much, you know, don't, don't go in and say, oh, I'm going to charge $1,500 a day because I have really special skills. And then you're not getting any work because you could charge $1,500 a day and you could still make zero at the end of the year. And that's not effective. So it's really about feeling, feeling it out and understanding what you're actually worth. And that's kind of a hard situation to be in, to figure out what you're worth, because it can be, you know, that's kind of sensitive for some people. They don't like to really think about it that way. But if you're new or you're just starting out and you're asking those questions, like how much should I charge for this? I don't really know. Well, obviously make sure all of your expenses are paid for. So if there's some particular rental gear that you need to, to achieve a project or you need to just pay to get there or something, you know, I wouldn't recommend taking a loss on something. You know, people should definitely be reimbursing you for gas and food at a bare minimum. But also, you know, don't say that you can do some Michael Bay commercial when you know that you can't afford all the pyrotechnics and, you know, the specialty camera equipment and stuff. Like if you can't afford it, don't promise that you're going to do it for $300 a day. It's just not reasonable, right? And it's about that feeling. What are they asking for? What do you think it's actually worth? And how does it feel in your gut? And a lot of people, when they first start out, they're, they're afraid to ask for too much. And that's totally fine. You know, find a number that you're comfortable with where you feel like you're not taking advantage of them and they're not taking advantage of you because that's ultimately what you want. You don't want someone walking away, a client walking away, feeling like they got ripped off. Like, oh, I just paid this guy $5,000 for the day and all he did was he showed up with a camera. He didn't even do audio. He didn't do lighting. And he was in and out in two hours. Like that's not the feeling you want to leave them with. They're not going to be happy. You're just going to get uh, you know, 5,000 bucks one day and you're really not going to get any referral work. You're probably not going to work with them again and you're not going to build a very good reputation. Now, if you go in and you find a number that you both kind of agree on where they feel like it's a good deal and you feel like you're making a reasonable amount of money, no one feels duped, no one feels taken advantage of, and it's a, a really good mutual relationship where you've been able to establish what you think you're worth and what they think you're worth, find a good number, agree upon it. 
But that still, I know, isn't an easy answer. People want a formula, they want one number. But the picture I'm trying to paint is that it's not that easy. You have to do it, a lot of times it's per project or it's per client, you know. There's some clients who, you know, maybe it's the local pizza shop and they just need some videos and they're they're essentially gonna hire somebody who maybe is like right out of college or they, you know, someone's nephew is involved, you know. They just want something cheap, they want something done quick. And maybe you're saying, I could provide a little bit better quality and I'm not. I'm really not going to charge that much more. I need the experience, but I'm going to do it really well, so you can get something for your reel or your portfolio. So you make a deal. You make an arrangement. But other times, there's you know more established companies, bigger companies, national companies, and they're looking for that high quality, and they can afford to pay it. And if you can offer it, then great. Charge a little bit more find out that balance and what makes the most sense for you and the client. But over time, you'll find that it's pretty easy to get a lot of low paying jobs. I mean, pretty much anywhere you are nowadays, people want video. It's really popular online. You know, there's still people doing broadcasts. You can use video pretty much anywhere. So most companies want it. And if you charge really low rates, you'll find that you'll get a lot of work. But that kind of spreads your base out really wide and really thin where you're not getting any kind of significant profit. You're not making money to where you can invest in yourself, invest in your gear. So you have to find that balance where at some point you start charging a little bit more. But if you charge too much, all the time, you'll find that you won't get that many projects. So you, you kind of build this tower, right, of just really expensive projects, but you don't get that many. And so your base isn't there. So you need to kind of actually find a mix and match situation where you're doing a little bit of the low end, a little bit of the high end, and that way you can kind of hopefully even out those gaps in, in terms of income. Because as a, a creative professional, that is the most a struggling part about it you know there's always that drive to get better and do better things but just being able to afford life is one of the hardest things i would say is just always a challenge because it's you know week to week month to month trying to find the next thing that's going to keep paying the bills and so you need that base of lower lower tier quality work right but also the high end you can't expect to always be working on the most amazing commercials or the most amazing movies and be getting paid all this money because what happens when there's a month off, there's a month break, or there's two months or three months, you know, there's a dry season where it's just not happening anymore. You need all those filler things to kind of fill in the cracks. And so really the the, mo the most beneficial thing I could, I could recommend is just be humble with yourself, your own perspective. Don't think that you're too good for any job, but also don't think that you're too bad for any job because there are times where there's a, a, a higher end project but maybe they don't, or they want to do something that's higher end. Like I, I should say that they want quality that's higher end. And there's people who are working on the project that are committed to that, but they just don't have the budget. Maybe it's a new startup company. Um, that's pretty common, you know, where people, they just, they don't have a lot to invest, but they're all dedicated to make something awesome. Well, don't feel like, oh, we can't work on that because it's too high quality. You can offer your services because that's a nice mutual relationship, right? What I was talking about before of finding something that works for both parties. But at the same time, don't get so arrogant that, oh, you only work on the super high end stuff because if that dries up, you know, there, there are some people, yes, who have that luxury, but I would say that's a, a small percentage. If you're, if you're asking the question of how much do you charge for pricing, just keep that in mind. Like I, I'm not talking to somebody who has their little pricing sheet of everything they do and they've got their list of clients and they got their connections and they're, and they're making money. That's not who I'm talking to. I'm talking to the people who are just starting out trying to figure out how do you navigate this system? How do you not get taken advantage of? Uh, one thing I can recommend is figure out some kind of payment system that is not uh, totally before the fact, but also not totally after the fact. Uh, negotiate your payment terms up front and figure out, I like to do something like a 50-50 split where there's like a 50% down payment for you know securing the work, but then there's a 50% uh, that gets paid upon completion of the work so that you have incentive to do it because you already got paid paid 50% but then you know they're not paying you 100% you could just disappear with the money because that happens right you know companies get taken advantage of by shady freelance people but freelancers also get taken advantage of by shady companies it happens all the time so i like the 50/50 split because it keeps things uh, kosher it keeps everyone happy but aside from that don't feel like you are too good or too bad for something uh, be be the best that you can be and, and charge reasonable prices for what you're worth. If you're not getting work, 
Uh, it could be that you're you're maybe looking in the wrong places, but you could just be charging too much. Um, but if you have too much work, right, where you're getting booked up every day, there's something and you just feel like you're not making any money, but you're constantly working, well, you're probably charging too little. So it, it, it is a growth, like there's a, a growth chart, right? The, the more you do, the more experience you have, the more connections you have, the more networking that takes place, the higher you can charge because you've hopefully got income coming that you can rely upon the next month or two but but you can never this is the thing you can never guarantee you can never guarantee it there are jobs that are pretty secure out there right you can go get a regular job get a day job and have security and stability long term where you know pretty much that that job's going to be there the next month or the next year with creative work and the creative industry, that is not always the case. So you definitely need to save and put money aside for those rainy days or those dry seasons. Hey, that's kind of funny. Those are kind of opposite, but I was trying to mean the same thing. The bad times, right? Have money set aside. Don't spend all your money uh, and live month to month. That's the worst thing you can do because the moment uh, you stop getting work or something happens, maybe you get injured and, and you just have to take some time off, you're you're kind of screwed and you don't want to be in that situation. So just be really smart with your money. It's kind of a, the opposite of what you would think that like creative people aren't that good with their money, that they're kind of uh, just go, go with the flow. And you can be that way if you want, uh, you know, if you have pretty uh, reasonable living uh, situation in terms of you don't have a lot of monthly expenses, then yeah, you can probably probably get by with that and being more go with the flow. But I think if you want to be successful and have, you know, a, a, a nice living, I guess you have the things that you want, you know, your monthly expenses are kind of normal cost of living type stuff. You've really got to be smart with your money, especially in any creative industry, just because it's it's so easy for it to dry up at any second. You never know when that's going to happen. You can never prepare for it. You never plan for it. And then there's other times where it is incredibly busy and it's the season of abundance and you get so much work. And those are great too. Don't take it for granted. Enjoy it while it's there. But then also know that, you know, there's busy times and there's not so busy times. And hopefully you can do the managing of evening it all out. So hopefully I gave you kind of a loose top level perspective on all of this. I know I didn't give you the answer to how to price specifically, but just kind of feel it out. If you're asking the question, you're probably towards that lower end of, of you know, you're not sure, you're not really comfortable with the, the rates, so stay to the low end. I'm, I'm totally a fan of doing stuff for free. I know there's people online who will say, never work for free, don't do it for free. But you can, if you have somebody who you trust, uh, you feel like it's a good relationship, you know, don't get taken advantage of, don't work with shady people. But if you feel like you know this person, you can trust them, do work for free too, because guess what? They are another extension of your network and every point of contact that you make along the way is another person who can reach you further and farther to more and more people who will likely eventually pay you one day. Now, if you if you don't have time to work for free all the time, obviously don't do it. Take the jobs that are going to pay you, but I would say even work for free if you're at that point of like, I don't know how much to charge for my services, I'm not really getting work charge low, charge free, and then kind of build up from there as you get more experience, as you get more comfortable. And then you can kind of settle into a nice uh, day rate if you have a certain type of work that you keep getting pretty frequently. You kind of figure it out. You kind of say, okay, so for me, my camera package and this type of job, I charge this amount per day. And, and you find a number that works for you in your area. But again, it's so specific to the individual. You really have to understand it yourself because there's no person, if you follow me or any other person online telling you this is what to charge, it's probably not going to be right for you. It's very specific, very individualized. You got to kind of figure it out for yourself, which is unfortunate, but that's why I want to make this video, hopefully give you a little bit of perspective to help you understand how to make those decisions for yourself.